Hot for day and good afternoon. Nick Delgado with the KUM News Team coming to you from Tiza and outside the National Weather Service. You can see some of the rainfall here this morning, but that's so much more that we want to tell you about after the National Weather Service putting out a tropical storm watch for Guam and Rota. This all after they say that 27W tropical depression. 27W uh, is tracking south of the of Guam and the Marianas. We're going to make our way inside because uh, Chip Guard here with the National Weather Service is supposed to give an update, a brief of what people can expect. Of course, they want people to uh, people here on Guam and north of us to to have those preparedness plans in place, even though there is no direct threat that they're uh, mentioning to us at this time. Of course, they want you to have that plan that includes locating or prepare your emergency preparedness kits for whatever event. Also clear any loose debris around your yard and store any of the items that may become airborne. Again, all precautions they want you to take. Also gas up those cars and stay away, uh, stay up to date, of course, with us here at KUM, as well as with uh, the Office of Civil Defense and the National Weather Service on the very latest. So we're going to make our way inside to see what Chip has to say this afternoon. We spoke with him this morning. Of course, we provided you the information on social media and on KUM.com all day long. So we're going to find out right now. Sign again. Okay. okay, welcome inside the National Weather Service here in Guam in Tizen. So hopefully we can find out where this weather brief is going on. But definitely an update that the community you need to know about. Uh, as we make our way, at least for the next, we're told 24 to 36 hours, we should be uh, seeing some of, of whatever the outcome that this chocolate depression will be bringing our way. Um, so we'll see what Chip has to say. Good afternoon, guys. <laughs> so we're on Facebook right now. Just we gave people uh, a brief of what you guys have been sending out and, and updating us. So, and so we're on track for this update at 2:30. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, these are the guys you're gonna want to. We're a few minutes behind. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Is there something you can show us of what we're looking at here? Uh, sure. Visible is the best in the daytime. Well, here's my visible where I made the ocean of blue. <laughs> and so, can you point out uh, where we are? And then this is Guam here in the green. The islands are green. So, I can make that loop for you in a minute here. It takes a minute to build the image tiles. Then, that flickering will quit. So you can see the winds curving upward, and that's forming the circulation of the tropical depression. And so we're, we're hearing of a time frame of 24, 36 hours. What uh, does that mean for, for us weather-wise? We expect showers to start increasing tonight, and they'll increase even more tomorrow. And that's when some heavier winds will start to move in, and the highest gust will be in the showers. Because usually in tropical cyclones, the high winds are actually a few thousand feet up, but the showers bring them down. And that's why the gusts accompany the showers. And uh, when, when it comes to, like, to the storm watch that was issued, that means what uh, we can expect some damaging winds? Is, is well, if it was expected, we would make it a warning. Mm -hmm. At this point in time, it's possible. And so that's what we're emphasizing is the uncertainty. Actually, time-wise, it would already be a warning because it's within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. But because it's still not expected, it's rather just possible. Mm -hmm. That's why it's still a watch. And so how long have you guys been, like, how, when did you guys first notice that there's this development out there? We've been tracking it for a few days. I mean, this is advisory number 14, and they issue four advisories each day at Joint Typhoon Warning Center. So four days. 
and we knew that it was in an area that would be favorable for coming somewhat close to the Marianas. Okay. Uh, anything else that the for first off, if you could just introduce yourself for our viewers out there. Hello, my name is Paul Stanko. I'm a senior forecaster here at the National Weather Service in Guam. Okay. All right, Paul. So while we wait for Chip, uh, to Chip will be doing the update here. Or? Sure, he can add a little more. <laughs> okay. If he's not too busy. <laughs> he's been busy with civil defense all day. Right. And so, how does that process work when you guys work with the civil defense to get that information out there to the community? How does that work? Well, we give them the meteorology, and they apply it to governmental operations. Okay. There's not much more to it than that. For, for your standpoint. We just give them the raw science data mm -hmm. and say, this is what's likely to happen, and it could get this bad. It, it probably won't, but it could. And in the past week, I mean, the a lot of people here in Guam have seen that weather. I mean, there was flooding here and there um, from the other storm that was passing or heading past us. Uh, so can we see more of this activity this time of year? This is usually one of our heavier times of the year, October and November. And then in El Nino year, it'll extend into December. Since this is not an El Nino year, we're looking more at October and November. Yeah. So. I wouldn't call this unexpected. Yeah. It's just that it had been a slow year, and so that's why it seems like such a sudden surge in activity. So is this something then that's all, all this rain, something that would you say is needed for the island? It's act we have about twice the normal rainfall for October, so I would not say it's needed. <laughs> okay. It's above normal. Not entirely unexpected, though. I mean, this is the wet time of year. Yeah. And so what should people do then uh, while you guys are, are monitoring this for us and we see what happens to that potential possibility? Well, one good thing to do if they can get out before nightfall would be to clear out any obstructions in their storm drains. Like if a bunch of vegetable matter has accumulated there, mm -hmm. they could just clear that out a little, and that way they'll drain more quickly and efficiently. Mm -hmm. That would reduce the severity of any flooding that might occur. Then if they have any loose outdoor objects, papers, furniture, trash cans, whatever, smaller loose outdoor objects, take those either inside or some other way, secure them so they won't blow away. Do this now, even though we're, we're seeing that this, even though we're still in that watch, you want them to do this yeah, because if they wait until the winds pick up, it's too late. And so it's possible that they would take these precautions and then nothing will happen. Right. That's possible. But it's always good to be prepared, plan ahead. Right. Okay. Um, are we noticing any changes just with, with as it's tracking uh, further closer to us or, or past us? Are we noticing any, any changes in the past few days that you've been monitoring this? Well, as it pulls itself together and organizes itself, it should become better behaved. It's been doing some strange stuff during this time period. It actually started moving southeast, oh, which really? is the opposite direction that it would normally move. It would start moving closer to shoot. Mm. So that's, un that's what you said? That's unusual, unusual, yeah. It was probably under some shear, and that shear caught it and that's never good for them, and it, that's the most likely thing that would have made it move in a weird direction like that. But now you see it tracking it, it's, what is the normal yeah, path. Yeah, it's when becoming better organized, so the shear must have let up. Okay. All right, so anything else that you want to have before we get going with the... I don't think so, and this is going to be a lower-end tropical storm, so... Just some basic minimal precautions. And by the time it does enhance to that level where it becomes a tropical storm, will it be well past our area? It's going to be passing by us at that time. At that point. Yeah. And so that's not too bad. Is we, it mostly the southern villages that need to be? Southern and there? eastern. OK. Uh, what I just highlighted in the statement we just issued that you probably haven't seen yet, but you'll see it when you get back to the studios. Okay. 
from about Pago Bay to Maritza would be the most vulnerable areas for a storm surge. Mm -hmm. And the storm surge with this isn't that big because it's only a tropical storm. Right. We're saying up to a foot. Okay, so when it comes to people being out there on the roads, uh, they, they're still fine, that's still okay, or? Yeah, it's only right next to the beach. Mm -hmm. It'll affect people whose houses are right there, next to the beach. And so then what does that mean also for, uh, for boaters and beach goers? We do have a small craft advisory out because for smaller boats, mm -hmm. this type of seas would be <coughs> rather tough to deal with. We have some 10 to 12 foot seas out there. A really big boat, it probably wouldn't bother that much. Yeah, we were seeing some rough seas just over the weekend from Tumon further yes. south. What, what was that a result of? Those were swell from Typhoon Land, which mm -hmm. was the previous system. And it had been out to our west. So that's why those west swells were coming in from it. We'll see what this as it starts to progress what this means for us and, but you said again it's just a possibility it's a potential uh, is it a threat a danger or? well most of the buildings on Guam being made of concrete yeah the danger level is not going to be that high with the exception of those whose houses are less substantial and there's mm -hmm. some of them and that's why there's that preparation included to make sure you know where the closest shelter is if you need to get a seat such. That's right, and if it looked like it was going to be an actual tropical storm warning, they'd look into opening mm -hmm. shelters, and they'd make that decision probably tomorrow morning. Okay, yeah, I was gonna say it's interesting because you said in the next, we were talking about 24, 36 hour time frame, but then we're still in the watch phase. Um, yep. Okay, let's see what's next with this brief. <laughs> yeah. We'll so see what Chip has to add. Yeah, so we'll give you another look just at what they've been tracking here for the past several days. So uh, Chocolate Depression 27W. Now the reason we like the visible imagery, it can be at a higher resolution. Mm -hmm. So you can see the cloud features more finely. The disadvantage of visible imagery is it depends on sunlight. When the sun goes down, your imagery stops. Mm -hmm. And then how do you guys classify with, with the name 27W? Well, we use that name, that's the JTWC designation. Mm -hmm. When it, Japan terms it to be a tropical storm, they will give it the WMO name. and That's when it will get a name other than 27W. So we wait for Japan to do that because they're the regional specialized meteorological center mm -hmm. for the West Pacific. Okay, great. All right, so you want to give them a, one more look again at what they're tracking here, and we'll see where Chip is. <laughs> is he here? <laughs> hey, uh, Clint, do you know if Chip is here? I thought he left. He I might have sure. went to the French balloon people. Yeah, he, he went to go do a briefing at Homeland Security, then he was going to go by and see that. Yeah, he might not actually be here. Ooh. Well, what do you think, Clint? Do you have anything to add after what you heard? No, no, but nothing more than what you said. Okay. Well, if you think I've given you enough, then <laughs> we could walk by Chip's office and see. <laughs> and if he's not there, then I guess you could go ahead and go. Okay. And then we'll just recap to people who are watching again what. Uh, yeah. Okay, sure. Quick summary again. It's closed. Okay, so, sorry we were walking around this entire office and, and just pretty much showing you, giving you a behind the scenes insight of uh, yeah, what the down. National Weather Service has been monitoring with 27W. Yeah. We, of course, will have the latest on this with uh, our weather officials here 
um, tonight on KUM News Primetime and on social media. But real quick, one more time, if we could just remind everyone, what is it that we are tracking here and what does it mean as we're in this uh, tropical depression watch? Tropical depression 27W is expected to start intensifying tomorrow, Tuesday. It's actually not expected to intensify tonight. So it'll become a tropical storm as it passes to our southwest. And since it's not expected to hit Guam directly, is it expected to pass some distance southwest of us? We're only going to see low end tropical storm level, if even that. So that uncertainty is why it's still a watch, even though it's only about 24 hours out, mm -hmm. which would normally be a warning. But a warning means it's expected, whereas a watch means it's possible. So that's okay. why it's still a watch. And again, those southern villages from Pago Bay all the way down to Marine, so a bit more vulnerable when it comes to something like this that we're tracking, but south of our island. So again, we'll have uh, the very latest tonight on Primetime. We'll see you then.